गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ विल स्टार्ट विद द इनवोकेशन श्लोक ऑफ अठयोग प्रदीपिका श्री आदिनाथाय नमोस्तु तस्म येनोपदिष्टा हठयोग विद्या विभ्राजते प्रोन्नतराजयोगम आरोढ़ुमिच्छोरिरोहिणी वुप्रभात नमस्ते टू वन एंड ऑल I am really happy to be in this Yoga Shastra Sangamam, which is in the Sangamam of three Mahasagaras, which is situated near that such a wonderful, inspiring place. As uh, <coughs> the Honorable Governor also mentioned, this is indeed a very inspiring place to be in. I was here when I was a very small child. my father brought me here after that after some two or three decades i am coming here so again i am reliving that uh, wonderful experience really happy to be part of this yoga shastra sangamam and uh, happy also to discuss this text hatha yoga pradipika uh, in these three days <coughs> i have been given four sessions so i think uh, i will be able to do justice by giving an overview of the text because it is a hatha yoga pradipika as you are very well aware all of you are from the yoga fraternity you may you are aware of aspects of hatha yoga pradipika so those who are well versed with hatha yoga pradipika for them this will be a revision for those who are entering into the portals of uh, yoga this will give you a fair idea of uh, how important this uh, text is and the centrality of the text will also be known and uh, how important it needs to be for uh, the practitioner teacher professional of yoga to internalize the content here in so <clears throat> before going into giving an overview i would uh, emphasize or kind of reiterate what initially um, the most respected nivedita ji spoke initially so yoga is uh, is not limited only to asana pranayama so it is a way of life it has so many other very wonderful dimensions to be incorporated in our life so um <clears throat> i just would like to start with a Uh, verse from uh, uh, the vyasa bhashya to yoga sutra um which which uh, defines what makes yoga uttama yoga all of us are yogis here yoga practitioners here aware of methods techniques etc of yoga so we are yogis uh, so how to become uttama yogis how to add values so whenever we go to seminars conferences we go there to add some value to the work that we are already doing so that we can do the work better so from yoga to uttama yoga is what we desire so uh, when we see that that also the vyasa's idea from that will also indicate how to go about yoga which is not merely limited only to asana pranayama so those ideas everything will converge here value addition in yoga and uh, the broader spectrum of yoga all this will be very clear when we see this idea from sage vyasa's commentary the primary commentary to yoga sutra to the sutra i think uh, ritambhara tatra pragna he says <coughs> sage vyasa says agamena अनुमानेन ध्यानाभ्यास रसेन चिधा प्रकल्पयन प्रज्ञा लभते योगम उत्तमम मेनी ऑफ यू मे बी अवेर ऑफ दिस वर्स बट दिस इज अ वर्स टू बी रिमेंबर्ड थ्रू आउट इन अवर जर्नी इन योगा 
सो वाट मेक्स उत्तम योग लभते योगम उत्तम सो वन अटेन्स द उत्तम योग हाउ त्रिधा प्रकल्पयन प्रज्ञा बै 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 अट अरविंग अट an intellectual clarity pragna pragna is clarity clear knowledge tridha prakalpayan facilitating our clarity in three ways tridha our yoga becomes uttama yoga what are the three ways agamena anumanena dhyana abhyasa rasena cha so these are the three ways in which we can argument the clarity of our intellect and then make our yoga uttama yoga agama is authentic knowledge so knowledge from the shastras and shastras learnt through the guru guru mukhena shastra adhyayanam that is agama so uh, receiving the knowledge of the shastras through a guru so that is agama apta vakya and then anumanena so we simply receive the knowledge and then accept it as such or kind of how do we process that knowledge we should actually process the knowledge so anumanena using our inferential analytical capability we have to work on the knowledge that we have received in the context of yoga in generally generally also this is uh, applicable especially in the context of yoga also so agama then process the agama with anumana for in the light of our intellectual capability uh, and all the methods laid down in the shastra as to how to use the anumana how to inferentially validate the knowledge for ourselves so agamena anumanena dhyana abhyasa rasena cha then abhyasa so agama anumana and abhyasa and abhyasa of what dhyana abhyasa the central aspect of yoga is dhyana uh, yoga sannahano paya dhyana sangati yuktishu yoga dhyana is a synonym for yoga according to amarakosha so whatever we do finally we have to come to the mind refine the mind focus the mind that's what we see chitta vritti nirodha so ध्यान अभ्यास रसेन च मींस फाइंडिंग द जॉय इन प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा हाउ कैन वी फाइंड जॉय इन प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा रिसीविंग द आगम देन अनुमान एंड देन अभ्यास सो इन दीज थ्री स्टेप्स व्हेन वी त्रिधा प्रकल्पयन प्रज्ञाम वी रिफाइन द क्लैरिटी इन आवर इंटेलेक्ट देन आवर योगा बिकम्स uttama yoga this is what vyasa says and that is what will lead us to the higher states like kritambhara pragna etc so at the very beginning of journey from yoga to uttama yoga what is the first step that is agama so it is the first step itself is agama and agama is a shastra so yoga shastra so when we delve deeper into the shastra then we uh, or then uh, or at least we know the frameworks of the shastra in a systematic manner especially the yoga shastra then we we can say that we have placed our foot firmly in the first step so occasions like this in yoga shastra sangama where we get to meet so many people who have worked on the various dimensions of yoga shastra will really make our first step towards uttama yoga really strong so i just wanted to set this context so why at all we should uh, know about the text why at all we should uh, discuss about yoga shastra why should there be a sangama of yoga because if we really want to make yoga uttama yoga then we have to come to yoga shastra sangama explore not only in yoga shastra sangama throughout our journey in the teaching learning practice of yoga we have to incorporate these three steps so these are the introduction introductory points that i wanted to make in establishing the importance of agama in in the realm of yoga shastra 
now so one such agama one such text for in yoga is hatha yoga pradipika so everyone knows that yoga sutra hatha yoga pradipika bhagavad gita all these are certain uh, basic texts of yoga shastra uh, so uh, last year i learnt that uh, yoga sutras were discussed in detail so now we are taking up hatha yoga pradipika for a discussion or a analysis or an overview of this text now when we see hatha yoga pradipika the first component is hatha yoga what is hatha yoga or what are the what is the origins of hatha yoga that we need to see first and then we will uh, come to uh, the the meaning of the word hatha etc all those we will see um hatha yoga generally uh, is is uh, is uh, generally perceived as a more practice oriented activity oriented yoga we will examine that <laughs> later in due course but first what exactly hatha stands for etc we will analyze but before that whatever is known as hatha yoga where does it find its origin we will see that we see that uh, certain studies are there which indicates the, the origin of hatha yoga to the hatha yoga sampradaya to the tantra uh, especially the tantra agama tradition so that is where uh, the, uh, um, uh, the hatha yoga tradition finds its uh, source there are the shaiva tantras the uh, pancharatra agamas or the vaishnavas and then the shakta agamas are there where each and shiva bhagavan narayana and shakti are the central divinities which are propitiated uh, or worshiped or meditated upon so it is in this in this uh, uh, agamic tradition it is from there that later hatha yoga has branched out this is the study of scholars so which can be traced to the beginnings of the common era so that is uh, the observation and when we see in the agamas themselves there are four aspects of any agama literature so be it the worship of shiva be it be it the worship of lord vishnu or the various practices of tantra of uh, the worship of the divine mother so we see basically the four aspects charya kriya charya pada kriya pada gnana or vidya pada and yoga pada so these are the four major divisions that anyone would find in the tantra agama literature where we see uh, the charya refers to conduct kriya refers to the various uh, religious performances associated to the worship of uh, shiva vishnu or uh, shakti and gnana refers to the swarupa of the ultimate divinity and how to attain that knowledge so description uh, of that in that uh, gnana pada section and finally yoga so yoga the very asana pranayama and such other practices mudra etc they will be indicated in the agama literature itself so in the agama itself in the agama lore itself we find that yoga as a pada as we say uh, samadhi pada sadhana pada vibhuti pada and kaivalya pada in yoga sutra similarly in agama literature we see these padas charya pada kriya pada gnana pada or vidya pada or and finally the yoga pada so these are the four pada so there we see the, uh, the uh, we see yoga as an integral aspect of the agama practices so uh, personal religious Uh, performances worships at home at temple all these are there in any agama practice along with that the yogic practices of asana pranayama mudras are also part of these agamic practices so that is the source and uh, the agama tradition continued and the uh, we, when we see the hatha yoga which focuses more on the four basic limbs of asana pranayama mudra and laya practices of nada anusandhana etc slowly it emerged as a separate uh, tra- a tradition around 900 ce 
that's what we see the oldest uh, text as of now see knowledge uh, needs to be updated as of now uh, as per the encyclopedia of indian philosophy uh, on the the yoga volume says the oldest available text on hatha yoga as such is the kaula gnana nirnaya by matsyendra natha then we have siddha siddhanta paddhati and then in the 15th century only later we see that hatha yoga pradipika emerges and uh, in this in this uh, period of emergence through or from the agama tradition when around this 15th century hatha yoga pradipika emerges it 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 it, uh, it is expressed in such a compact and systematic manner that even after hatha yoga pradipika later texts have emerged like gheranda samhita shiva samhita hatha abhyasa paddhati so many other uh, texts have emerged still one goes back to hatha yoga pradipika because of its systematic approach this is true for any other uh, shastra also in vyakarana in uh, in the grammar discipline there are so many kinds of vyakarana aindram chandram kashakritsnam kaumaram shakatayanam saraswatam apishalam so many types of vyakarana existed but panini vyakarana has survived since 5000 years because of its compactness systematic nature and very um, um uh, uh, and it's it's a thorough treatment of topics so in that sense similarly though in hatha yoga tradition texts have preceded and succeeded hatha yoga pradipika still hatha yoga pradipika stands as a very valuable text because as you will see the comprehensiveness compactness and systematic approach to the topic and already we we see that uh, and one more thing to be highlighted in the context of uh, this shastra is whenever there is a source text it has to be studied with the commentary traditional commentary so only then uh, The, the the import of the text will emerge in all its completeness or else there is every possibility that the text is um uh, in a limited way is is uh, interpreted in an inadequate manner so hence if there is a text in our tradition and if it has a samskrita traditional commentary then one should take extra efforts to study the text with the commentary so then uh, we we will inherit the knowledge in its entirety that is conveyed by the text and one such shining commentary wonderful commentary to hatha yoga pradipika is the jyotsna commentary by brahmananda to hatha yoga pradipika so whoever studies hatha yoga pradipika should study it with the uh the jyotsna commentary then the, uh, the 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 level of uh, ideas that emerge from it see uh, the doubts that we get by studying the source text alone will not remain if we study it with the commentary because uh, the commentary itself is defined bhashya is defined as sutrartho varnyate yatra padaihi sutranukari bihi स्वपदानि च व्याचष्टे भाष्यम भाष्य विदो विदुहु इन एनी भाष्य और एनी कमेंट्री और एनी टीका हाउ बाय डेफिनेशन व्हाट डस इट डू द सूत्र और द सोर्स टेक्स्ट इज देयर सूत्रार्थ वर्ण्यते सूत्रार्थ वर्ण्यते द मीनिंग ऑफ ईच ऑफ द टर्म्स ऑफ द सोर्स टेक्स्ट इज एक्सप्लेन्ड एंड देन स्वपदानि च व्याचष्टे सो द कमेंटेटर ensures that he explains he or she whoever it is he explains the meaning of each of the words of the source text and he also explains the interpretations that he has given so it is a two tier approach so uh, the, the first explanation to the source text then explanation of one zone uh, explanation so swapadani cha vyachaste भाष्यम भाष्य विदो विदु सो वन सच कमेंट्री टू हठ योग प्रदीपिका विच फिट्स इन द क्लासिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ कमेंट्री इज ज्योत्सना कमेंट्री सो विदउट विच वॉट हैपन्स इज मेनी थिंग्स रिमेन्स के सी मेनी थिंग्स डू नॉट बी विल नॉट बी क्लियर 
So though this commentary to Hatha Yoga Pradipika Jyotsna came later, three or four centuries later, but still it is worth pursuing with the commentary. And as I said, Hatha Yoga Pradi the Hatha Yoga tradition did not stop with Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Further texts also came like Gheranda Samhita, Shiva Samhita, etc. So this is the slide that uh, gives you a not a thorough introduction to Hatha tradition, but a fair amount of introduction which shows where, where, in which tradition, where does, where is the origins, where lies the origins of Hatha Yoga and then how it slowly branched out. And then what are the, what are the texts, major texts that came out of, uh, came in the Hatha tradition. So a, a, a fair amount of introduction of the Hatha tradition that we see in this. And then focusing more or now zeroing in on. So now we saw the tradition and the position of Hatha Yoga, Hatha Yoga Pradipika in the tradition. Now let's focus more on the text in our hand. That is, let's zoom in to Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So what is, first there are three words there, Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Three words are there. Maybe someone, some, some will say there are four words. Ha, Tha, Yoga, Pradipika. So, uh, what is Ha? Ha is stated as sun and Tha is stated as moon. And uh, Pradipika is light. So, light on the sun and the moon. When sun and moon are already light, then <laughs> what, what is the need for light on sun and moon? So, there is another word yoga that is the conjoining of the sun and moon and the light on it is Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So, what is uh, the sun and the moon etc. that is from the Siddha Siddhanta Paddhati which is an, which is an older text that itself defines, uh, text prior to the Hatha Yoga Pradipika defines Akara Kirtitaha Suryaha Thakaraha Chandra Uchyate Surya Chandra Masor Yogat Hatha Yoga Nigadyate. So, Hatha Yoga is the conjoining of Surya and Chandra. So, and that text which throws light on the conjunction of the Surya and Chandra is Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Now, we are still not clear as to what is Surya and what is Chandra. So, are they the celestial entities which are indicated? So, actually, uh, the commentator in the Jyotsna commentary, he clarifies that uh, Ha refers to Prana, Tha ref refers to Apana. So, Prana Apana Sanyogaha, Hatha Yogaha and uh, the light of knowledge that comes from the commentary comes. We know early in the morning there will be fog. There are, things will not be very clear. It will be hazy. When the sun rises, what happens? The fog will vanish. Similarly, in such words, such expressions like Surya, Chandra, etc., when we consult the commentary, all the haziness or all the kind of arbitrary interpretations which, which might exist to terminologies which might have been provided by so many uh, uh, people, so that can be overcome if we consult the commentary. So, Ha is Surya, the energy giving uh, uh, component uh, of Vayu that is Prana. And Tha is Chandra, the relaxing uh, component of Prana, uh, that is uh, apa, sorry, that is Apana. So Tha is the one that uh, relaxes uh, by removing the impurities from the system, that is Apana, which is equated to Chandra. So Tha is Prana, Tha is Chandra, and Prana Pana Yoho Yoga, the conjoining of Prana and Apana is Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga. So, conjoining of Prana and Apana itself is called as Hatha Yoga. Now, where does the conjoining of Prana and Apana happen, etc.? We see later, actually, when, only when we get into the text, we will get a clarity that uh, the, the Prana and then the Apana both are united and then the entire purpose of the pranayama as per the Hatha Yoga Pradipika in the pranayama and mudra chapters when we see 
we see that it is the, the, uh, the through the three bandhas, Jalandhara, Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha, that all the prana and apana are united and then they those that is pushed into the Sushumna Nadi. So, the very purpose of pranayama is the conjoining of uh, prana and apana and its entry into Sushumna Nadi. Then why should prana and apana enter into Sushumna Nadi? These are certain very fundamental clarifications from the textual lore which are very essential when we go into Hatha Yoga. Only when the prana enters into the Sushumna, the prana spanda reduces. The vibration or the or the um, or the pulsation in the prana reduces. So when prana settles down, that's when the mind will settle down. Because prana and uh, pranaha and manaha both are the uh, uh, two sides of the same coin, be it Yoga Vasishta, be it later in Hatha Yoga Pradipika, every text clarif clarifies that uh, yeah, prana pavana spandaha chitta spanda sayevahi. So, whatever is the pulsation of prana, which is the pulsation of the chitta also, this is from Yoga Vasishta. So, we see that uh, according, this is the Hatha Yoga approach towards dhyana. So, when through this pranayama, prana is prana and apana are united and it is pushed into the sushumna nadi, then prana settles down and it does not mean that merely by pushing the united prana and apana into sushumna everything uh, we are done, we attain moksha, no it does not happen. There are again three blocks, the Vishnu Granthi, Rudra Granthi, Brahma Granthi, slowly the prana which has entered into sushumna has to be raised till Brahmarandra. So, and those processes exist. So, that is how basically the mind settles down. So, making the, to make the mind settle down through the practice of pranayama, that exactly is the fundamental uh, approach of Hatha Yoga as per this commentator, uh, this uh, Jyotsna commentary, right at the first verse Shri Adinathaya Namostatubhyam, there itself he clarifies. So, Hatha Yoga is Pranayama. What is Pranayama? Pranayama is not mere inhalation and exhalation. Pranayama is making the prana enter into the Sushumna and allowing it to gradually settle down to facilitate further meditative practices. So, this is Hatha Yoga. I hope this, is, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, idea is clear. And that text which throws light on this Pradipika. So, this the processes that are associated with such Hatha Yoga, that text which throws light on these processes, that is called as Hatha Yoga Pradipika. It is sometimes it is called as Hatha Pradipika also. Okay. So, uh, and uh, we have already seen all these uh, details. And the author of uh, this Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the wonderful text is um, Swatma Rama, Swatma Rama or Atma Rama or Chintamani. So, these are the names for uh, the author that we see and uh, he is stated to be according to the textual uh, references. He comes in the, in the family of uh, yogis. So, he is the son of Sahajananda Yogindra, that is what we find. So, that I am reminded of the Bhagavad Gita shloka, Nahi Kalyana Krit Kaschit Durgatim Tata Gachati, Athava Yogina Meva Kule, Janma Yadi Drisham, Etadhi Durlabhataram. So, when people pursue yoga to whichever extent they succeed, that is fine. In the next birth, they will be blessed to be born in the family of yogis. And our Swatma Rama, who is the author of Hatha Yoga Pradipika, is one such yogi born in the family of yogis. So, and the meaning of Swatma Rama, it is actually discussed in the commentary. What is the meaning of Swatma Rama? Who becomes a Swatma Rama? The, there is a sutra in, I am just giving a hint, I am not going into it or else the entire first hour lecture will end here on explaining this. I will just hint, you can consider uh, looking into it. Um, there is this sutra, uh, Tasya Saptadha, Pranta Bhumihi Pragna in the second chapter, just before the commencement of the Ashtanga Yoga concepts, 
तो तस्से सप्तधा प्रांत विवेक ख्याति देन अ पर्सन अटेन्स विवेक ख्याति ही विल स्लोली असेंड द सेवेन लेवल्स ऑफ क्लैरिटी सो ब्रह्मानंद स्टेट्स दट स्वात्माराम हू हेज गिवन दिस टेक्स्ट हठयोग प्रदीपिका हेज अचीव्ड दट स्वात्माराम द स्टेट ऑफ बीइंग इमर्ज्ड इन द ब्लिस ऑफ वंस ओन आत्मन द प्यूर कॉन्शियसनेस बै ट्रांसेंडिंग ऑल द सेवेन स्टेप्स द सप्तधा प्रांत भूमि the details of the saptadha pranta bhumi is uh, described in yoga sutra also you will get it the commentary is there and here also uh, in the jyotsna commentary also you will get a discussion on that why is so much of an explanation or elaboration is given on the author because we always value uh, a text uh, the, the one who speaks about the text also matters so uh, the mere words from a from a a great achieve a great a yogin or siddha purusha even a few words from a siddha purusha will enlighten us uh, uh, as as uh, as uh, shri arabindo in savitri would say a light has come down and it it has touched a few li lives i am not quoting verbatim and a few have risen to greater heights just uh, uh, vaguely quoting it so in this way the the words of very accomplished yogins even though if they are very little when we know the greatness of them the reverence or the shraddha towards the text will increase and then our even in yoga sutra shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya purvaka itaresham what are the upayas in any uh, uh, what is the fundamental upaya towards progress in yoga shraddha is an important upaya to develop our shraddha towards this text that this is not given by anyone uh, but this is given by a accomplished yogi that we know from uh, the very name nomenclature swatmarama and the inputs on swatmarama that is given by the brahmananda commentary so this is in brief about the hatha yoga pradipika and also the uh, the author of hatha yoga pradipika now a brief introduction to the chapterization uh, of uh, hatha yoga pradipika how many chapters we have so there are four chapters um, in this standard edition that we see from the theosophical society so one of the oldest uh, uh, publications uh, of hatha yoga pradipika uh, and uh, very standard uh, uh, edition so uh, and of course uh, certain other yoga institutes have found other manuscripts of uh, hatha yoga with five chapters the fifth chapter is also there which speaks uh, more about uh, the, the therapeutic dimension but uh, i am going with the, this theosophical society edition where we see four major aspects of uh, four limbs of yoga being stated in four successive chapters the first chapter is about uh, the asanas and other prerequisites of yoga which has 67 verses in this edition and then the second chapter is on pranayama 78 verses and the third chapter is on mudras 130 verses and the fourth chapter is on samadhi and that too with special focus on the nadanu sanadanu sandhana uh, practice which has 114 verses you can see by the very distribution of the verses is very indicative that uh, as is commonly perceived hatha yoga is not merely about asanas alone hatha practice means not merely asana asana has been given only 67 verses and not all these were all the 67 verses are not exclusively on asanas alone only a few verses i think 38 verses in the first chapter are only dedicated to asanas and rest of it is about the prerequisites for uh the entire hatha yoga what kind of ahara what are the other niyamas that are to be followed etc so that is the position of uh, asana in hatha yoga so textually when we look into a text and the distribution of verses that gives us a clarity as to what hatha yoga really means and what it really does not mean so hatha yoga of course asana is an important uh, integral primary preliminary limb but primary preliminary limb only but as you can see the major focus is on the mudras so pranayama 
we we have in, in the beginning you might a question might come in your mind in the beginning you said pranayama satha yoga actually i didn't say this is brahmanandas version but pranayama culminates with mudras only so pranayama generally we understand is inhala inhalation hold and exhalation but uh, that amount of pranayama is indicated in the second chapter but pranayama that leads prana into sushumna that is uh, mentioned all the mudras are there for making the prana and apana into uh, flow into the sushumna that is the real pranayama that is the higher pranayama so that is given exclusive attention that is very evident from the number of verses that is devoted to uh, the mudras therein so hence we can see the central aspect of hatha yoga is the higher pranayama where prana flows into sushumna the numbers themselves indicate that and of course so though that is the primary focus of hatha yoga as in the as indicated in the in uh, invocation verse itself vibhrajate pronata raja yogam arodhum adhirohini va hatha yoga with all its inputs on asana lower pranayama and higher pranayama is still a ladder adhirohini to what raja yoga raja yoga is chitta vritti nirodha first ekagrata then chitta vritti nirodha in the form of sampragnata and then asampragnata so this is raja yoga and that raja yoga is served by the hatha yoga so that's why that raja yoga portion which is dealt in the fourth chapter has also been given equal importance almost equal importance of 100 plus verses so by all these practices of hatha yoga the prana enters into sushumna then on the entry of prana into sushumna what needs to be done that uh, that that is means and the goal is raja yoga which is emphasized in the fourth so in this sense that hatha yoga pradipika is a complete text where it starts off with uh, the hatha yoga and then culminates in raja yoga so uh, this this gives an idea about um, uh, and one, one more uh, clarity that we get is hatha yoga pradipika itself is a self sufficient text means it is not that we learn hatha yoga pradipika and then we read uh, 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 this patanjali yoga sutra etc means this itself is self sufficient where this itself can lead to the uh, jivatma paramatma sanyoga then adanu sandhana and other practices etc which lead to samadhi and samadhi culminates in jivatma paramatma sanyoga and moksha is attained herein so hatha yoga itself is a path in this sense this hatha yoga not the generally perceived hatha yoga this hatha yoga itself is complete enough to lead to the ultimate state of moksha then what is the use of patanjali yoga sutras so patanjali patanjali yoga sutras has its own approach so that is another approach beginning from yama niyama etc asana pranayama then pratyahara etc the those ideas are there a person who has who is devoted to this hatha path can derive valuable lessons on the raja yoga dimension from the patanjali yoga sutras so this is how uh, these are though these are exclusive path means this is independently this will lead to the goal and uh, patanjali yoga sutras will independently lead to the ultimate goal but we see uh, uh, in uh, in the text themselves attempt to bridge these two traditions hatha and uh, raja yoga tradi- uh, hatha yoga tradition and the patanjali yoga sutra tradition attempts have been made to bridge these two not to see them uh, though they are indeed uh, uh, have a unique uh, path charted in each of these attempts are also there for example yoga yagna valkya samhita yoga yagna valkya samhita is a classical example of a marriage between the hatha tradition and the patanjali tradition where yoga yagna valkya samhita is essentially a hatha yoga text which speaks about pranayama etc speaks about kundalini awakening of kundalini etc but the chapterization is based on the ashtanga yoga yama niyama asana pranayama so attempts have been made to 
in in the tradition itself in the textual tradition itself to connect hatha yoga and uh, the patanjali yoga you know in a in a uh, these are these are these are the ways so why why this hybrid attempt was made in the text itself is to maximize the gains so why to i pursue this path of course with total dedication when there is wonderful ideas elsewhere why should i miss it out miss out on that so derive from that and progress so in that sense uh, these are the additional ideas so basically this slides this slide presents the chapterization and the number of verses themselves indicate the the emphasis of the text which i have already indicated so um now we can uh, uh, go into the uh, first chapter asana and other prerequisites for yoga now um as i mentioned uh, the, you can see uh, how many verses uh, more than close to 400 verses are there and uh, it will be difficult for me to summarize or kind of explain each of those 400 verses humanly impossible and it will be a tiresome cumbersome job for you also to uh, listen to such uh, elaboration so what i propose to give is uh, uh, i i have made clusters of verses so for example verses 1 to 3 verses 4 to 7 for i'm just giving an example verses 9 to 12 so what do these meaningful units in the text speaks about if we get an idea about that then we can explore more so that is the approach that i have adopted not leaving out any verse but those verses will be indicated as cluster of verses containing one common theme that is uh, uh, running in it so that is the approach i have seen see here in the first chapter we can see that uh, the first chapter itself is of three parts so part 1 uh is the first 16 verses which is in the form of invocation and also speaks about prerequisites of yoga so then part 2 is the core central part if you want to call it that way speaks about the asanas the 38 verses verses 17 to 54 asanas definitions definition of asanas are mentioned and how how to perform what is the feet position how the back should be erect all those and the variations in various kinds of asanas so all that is that asanas are defined and a few of the asanas benefits of few of asanas are mentioned so that is that is the the core part of it and then part 3 again from verses 55 to 67 the 13 verses towards the end of the chapter we see dietary and other lifestyle prescriptions uh, for a hatha yogin so in these three parts so these are the three major clusters so uh, this is how we can encapsulate the teachings of the first chapter in three parts we can understand but i i will uh, i will give up give the split up of each of these uh, units further i hope this is clear so initially invocation prerequisite the tradition is introduced initially and then prerequisites for a yogi and then uh, 38 verses on asanas and 13 verses again back to guidelines for a hatha yogi now let's go into the uh, first unit where the invocation prerequisites for yoga is discussed so in the first three verses invocation to prayers to the divinity uh, to the teacher and the purpose of the com- composition all these are in- introduced uh, in the first three verses by acharya yogi swatmarama so uh, what which, which what is the divinity uh, which is addressed in this shri adinatha yanamo sputasmai adinatha adinatha is the divinity and then uh, who is the teacher of uh, 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 swatmarama we don't see any sp- specific mention of the teacher as we see that uh, in ancient tradition the father himself becomes the teacher so the the home is the first school either the mother or the father or both become the teachers so as we have reference to sahajananda and it is not that only the father teaches and the father also takes uh, the child to the various uh, learned teachers and then teaches in uh, in the various upanishads we see especially in, uh, in the case of shweta ketu aruni though uh, aruni puts shweta ketu into a 
uh, in a delayed way he puts him into another school to learn the student or uh, the child learns or child becomes a lad when he comes back 24 years then finding that his boy has not learned uh, uh, the knowledge in full aruni himself starts teaching tattvamasi and other such principle as an epitome of a teacher so in that in that sense we see that uh, in the initial three verses the divinity adinatha shiva and interestingly the commentary so then uh, is it a shiva text then so it is a, is it a shiva oriented text the commentator gives an interesting perspective how does the shloka begin shri adinathaya that's how the shloka begins so shri can be taken as a uh, the, the, uh, title honorific title so then adinatha means adishcha uh, uh, natha tatra adinatha the primordial source the lord shiva that is one interpretation and shriyaha uh, shriyaha adinatha shri is lakshmi who is the natha of lakshmi uh, lord vishnu so and actually we see uh, bhagavan vishnu being worshiped as adinatha in uh, in in uh, 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 in um, there is a place in um, close by only in near tirunelveli uh, alvar tirunagari alvar tirunagari where shri krishnamacharya the, the, the tradition in which i learned and practiced uh, learned and practiced yoga so in alvar tirunagari lord vishnu is known as adinatha so in that sense uh, uh, bhagavan vishnu can also be addressed as shri adinatha and shiva is also adinatha in that sense both both the divinities are accommodated so they, let there be no discord in that aspect and let us not move away from the core aspect of yoga so let us uh, so language or interpretation can bring in that uh, that harmony in a very simple manner so that is seen there so invocation to divinity to his teacher and the purpose of composition kevalam raja yogaya hatha vidya upadishyate that's what swatmarama clarifies in the beginning only to uh, uh, reach the state of raja yoga this hatha vidya is being taught by me so hatha yoga itself is not an end raja yoga is the real end so that has been emphasized and repeated in the uh, in the in the initial three verses so right so the next uh, set of verses 4 to 9 we see a list of teachers um where the all the uh, verses from 4 to 9 speak about various teachers hatha vidyam matsyendra gorakshadya vijanate swatmaramothava yogi shri adinatha matsyendra shabara ananda bhairava chaurangi meena goraksha virupaksha bileshaya manthana bhairava i am not reading out the entire list you can see the list there some 34 teachers are mentioned 30 30 and odd uh, teachers are mentioned there where we see Um, references to matsyendra natha goraksha natha uh, they they are very prominent teachers where we see goraksha shatakam goraksha samhita all these are very important texts in hatha tradition and then um, as we saw the very oldest text on hatha yoga kaula gnana nirnaya is from matsyendra natha and uh, the story about matsyendra natha is also given by brahmananda the commentator only how uh, shiva was teaching lord shiva was teaching uh, the hatha yogic uh, principles to goddess uh, parvati and uh, in the in the banks of manasa uh, sarovar and uh, uh, a fish was uh, was still the nature of the fish is it will never stay in one place but just one fish was uh, very still and it was observing all the teachings in the form of conversation that's happening between uh, bhagavan shiva and bhagavati parvati so then uh, God, the, the lord's uh, gracious uh, drishti fell upon that uh, matsya and that matsya gets converted into a, a human form and that matsya becomes matsyendra natha the first yogi that legend whether or not so it, 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 it depends on our own shraddha to take it or leave it but still uh, that is the tradition followers of sampradaya or according to the jyotsna commentary we see so matsyendra as the uh, the primary teacher in the human realm to bring the knowledge from the divine realm so matsyendra natha is the primary teacher and we also see 
that uh, matsyendra asana so uh, an asana is also credited with uh, matsyendra asana gorakshasana matsyendra asana all such asanas are also there in the name of the various teachers who gave those asanas so um, then we see that uh, we see that uh, why why such a long list of lineage we have to reason it out why such a long list of lineage is given uh, is khandayitva kaladandam brahmande vicharantite that is why that that's given there that is these 30 and odd teachers of uh, or the practitioners of hatha yoga they have cut asunder the limitations of time and they are there in the brahmanda the entire cosmos independently and freely if you want to become one such come on take up the practice and study of hatha yoga so to give the role model to inspire so all these uh, the list is given and also a reverence to the sampradaya that the knowledge that is handed down through the teacher student tradition that is very valuable so to give importance to the tradition and also to show that so many people have already achieved the the hatha yogic uh, excellence or the the goal of hatha yoga hence you can also try so uh, and the human beings always need role models we need yes they have also done then we can also try so in that sense we can take it uh, in those uh, two uh, dimensions the list of the teachers can be taken that way and then and uh, swatma rama in the 10th verse says that uh, uh, just uh, uh, it says that uh, hatha yoga is the one which will re- relieve us from the pain of samsara normally again uh, this is interesting this is an interesting verse where he says that uh, ashesha tapa taptanam samashraya matho hatha ashesha yoga yuktanam aadhara kamatho hatha the point is if you go key in the word hatha in any online sanskrit dictionary or if you take up any sanskrit dictionary and see the meaning hatha then normally you will see the meaning force force means suffering if we force ourselves in any yoga path it will lead to suffering already human beings are already in various kinds of sufferings adhyatmika adi daivika adi bhautika suffering which exists na- na- normally and naturally why to do one hatha force upon ourselves and suffer so to clarify that hatha yoga does not mean force which will lead to suffering this verse we can take it that way this verse says ashesha tapa taptanam samashraya matho hatha so people who are who are tormented people who are tormented with various kinds of sufferings so we 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 seek solace in some hermitage in some peaceful ashrama so that ashrama is uh, nowhere outside elsewhere in the practice of hatha itself you will find the solace so this is a very categorical internal evidence indicating that hatha is not force hatha is pranapana sanyoga pranayama so there are people have written research papers to establish that hatha is force no hatha is not force and hatha is here to remove our suffering that is indicated through this verse so that that is a very important verse to be noted and then the next uh, uh, a few ideas uh, prerequisites preliminary ideas in hatha yoga is given that is uh, importance of secrecy swatma rama emphasizes that whatever is going to be spoken henceforth uh, has to be maintained in a uh, sense of secrecy so what is secrecy then why did swatma rama reveal it in the form of a text so the point is it should be given to a the very idea of secrecy is how do we convey a secret we speak secret is to be maintained secretly but still we convey secret how do we convey secret not through the mic so we speak in the ears of a person means in a very intimate manner we inform that person uh, uh, alone in an aloof manner so in that way the knowledge of hatha has to be passed and it is not to be uh, indiscriminately 
chaired to the undeserving so one has to choose a deserving or one has to choose deserving students and then with all the ensuring their sincerity one should pass on this knowledge of hatha that is the meaning of secrecy or else why would hatha uh, uh, swatmarama write a book so this knowledge has to be passed on but it has to be passed on as we pass on a secret in a in a serious manner giving it only to a deserving person so that idea is mentioned there and then comes the practical details all these are very important uh, aspects of hatha yoga which are to be uh, remembered it is not as mentioned these are the these are the principles that drive the entire uh, the practice of hatha or practice of yoga these are to be kept in mind while passing on this knowledge of hatha learning and passing on so then the matha lakshana or uh, the place where hatha has to be practiced so that is called as a matha a monastery or you can call it as a monastery or a very uh, suitable place for the practice of asana where i will just elaborate on this point and then end the session here we will continue later <coughs> hatha for the practice of yoga uh, the the quality the first uh, the verse uh, in that says सुराज्ये धार्मिके देशे सुभिक्षे निरुपद्रवे सो ए योगी शुड चूज अ प्लेस विच इज अ सुराज्य एंड विच इज अ धार्मिक देश एंड इट इज अ इज अ देश विच इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग सुभिक्ष एंड इट इज निरुपद्रव फोर आस्पेक्ट्स इन विच कैंड ऑफ कंट्री और इन विच कैंड ऑफ स्टेट वी हैव टू प्रैक्टिस हट योग इट इज अ सुराज्य इट शुड बी अ सुराज्य वेल गवर्नड स्टेट एंड देन धार्मिक इट इज नॉट मियरली वेल गवर्नड इट इज गवर्नड इन दाथ ऑफ धर्म सर्टन नेशन वी सी द रोड विल बी वेरी क्लीन एंड एंड सो मच ऑफ अ डिप्लीन इन ट्राफिक एक्सेट्रा ऑल दोज थिंग्स विल बी देर बट इज इट अ धार्मिक देश क्वेश्चन मार्क सो देर इज सुराज्य बट इज इट धार्मिक वन हेज टू थिंक सो the desha should be surajya it should be dharmika and it should be subhiksha means it should have resources in plenty prosperity should be there and a nirupadrava nirupadrava means um, there should be no anti social elements which torment people upadrava upadrava is uh, 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 tormenting uh, elements so uh, or uh, the, the torment that one experiences nirupadrava means a place which is bereft of thieves decoids and such other anti social elements bereft of that so where do we go and search for the basic question i wrote an article about it yoga for nation building we can think about yoga and nation so should we go if we in the entire uh, world if you search i don't know where you will find such a nation you have to create such a nation or whichever nation we live in whichever country we live in we have to ensure so yogis have a role in in the in the creation or 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 the uh, or creating the ambience the right ambience it is not that we go in search of such place making it surajya making it dharmika making it subhiksha making it nirupad nirupadrava yogins have to play an active role so that they can practice yoga so it it will cater to the general well being as well and it will also facilitate more and more people to get into yoga so there is this uh, the, this implication of yoga in nation building can be seen this way so in such a nation or such a country one has to start practice yoga and then what are all the specifics of a matha etc we will take up in the next session mm-hmm.